So switching gears a little bit, I was wondering if you could take us back to where you were in your life when you switched careers. I know you were a basketball player for a while. I know you grew up in the music business with your dad, but then you played basketball. And then there was a point where you switched careers. Can you talk about mentally where you were, physically where you were, how was that? Yeah, when I was playing basketball, my dream was to obviously play in the NBA and had a career ending injury, which kind of made me change direction and made me focus or refocus on music. Uh, and that was a tough time because I really had planned on playing basketball and I'd worked my whole life to do that. Uh, but in the long run, I think it was a really fortunate you know, turn of events. You know, to get hurt, you never think that's a good thing, but it turned me towards music and it made me really, really um, take all my energy and effort that I was putting into basketball and put it towards music. Uh, that was right at the time I finished college, so I was young and I could, I was still malleable enough to just adjust and you know switch into something else. But um, music was always a, a passion of mine when I was a kid. I think I started taking piano lessons when I was six years old, seven years old. Uh, and it was a hobby all through college. So it was al I always kept my, my, my toe in the water with music. Uh, and then when basketball finished for me, it was just definitely a kind of a wholesale refocusing. I started doing jingles and uh, locally in Arizona where I was going to college, I started doing uh, commercial music and working for ad agencies. And you know, I was doing music for anybody who wanted it, break stores, you know, buses, things like that. I, I would make a jingle for anybody. And uh, all the while I was trying to get to Los Angeles to kind of kick in somebody's door to listen to my, my music. And that took me probably three or four years driving out to LA and for a week at a time, listen, trying to get people to listen to my demos. I was sending cassettes to people back then, you know, throwing cassettes into people's convertibles and doing anything I could <laughs> to get my music heard. And uh, that was kind of how I started here in LA was just driving out here, sleeping in my car every now and then, whatever I had to do. Um, and then one guy took notice. He said, hey, I love what you do. I'll pay you, I think, $2,500 to do a job for him. And at that point, that was like, oh my God, I'm in. I made it. And uh, that was my first job, Motown Records. I did a remix for one of their artists. And uh, then I end up here doing an interview with you. <laughs> what year was this? That was probably 94 something okay. like that. Okay. So you said earlier that uh, you take a nugget of something from each project and there's some lesson in it. So looking back at the jingles, maybe creatively it wasn't the most fulfilling, maybe it was. What, have you, what did you take from that that you used then to build this amazing studio that you have here that's absolutely beautiful? I tell you how I took so much from that two or three year period where I did advertising music because you have to do every range of music. And some guy says, oh, I want it to be country western. And you know, my burger joint, I feel like it's you know, a country place or a blues music, or I want this kind of music, or I want classical. So you have to be able to do all, that type, all those types of music. You have to be able to deliver it quickly, and you have to be able to do it economically when you're working in a small market like that. So it was an amazing training ground for me. Uh, the other thing that I got from that is working outside of your own bubble of creativity. Like you can't do whatever you want when this guy's trying to sell cars with his music. You have to do what he thinks is gonna help him sell cars. So uh, you really have to pay attention to what people want. You have to be able to translate what they're thinking because he's a car salesman or a brake store owner or a guy who runs a mall. He's not a musician. You have to figure out what he's trying to get to with his music and figure out how to get it out of your fingers and out of the speakers ultimately. So that's what I use every day with whether it's an A&R guy for a record label or a director for a film, um, being able to take what they say and what they think and what they feel and making that come to life with music is something that I do every day. So that's great training. And then as I said, being able to do all the different kind of genres of music and being able to have access to my background being in all those types of music. I did so many rock and roll commercials, so many, you know, classical commercials that I can draw from that now when I'm when I'm needing to do a, a piece of music for a film.